Hi and welcome to Civil Speedia. Today we will be seeing current affairs for 24th September. Today's topics are non communicable diseases, mudra scheme, Umang app, and India cooling action plan. We will start with our first topic that is the non communicable diseases. This topic will be useful for your prelims as well as your mains exam. Recently, a report was published in Lancet which said that among other countries, India will also miss the target of the sustainable development goal related to the non-communicable diseases. Goal number three of sustainable development goal, it relates to the good health and well-being. And one of the targets under this goal three, it is related to non-communicable diseases and it says that by 2030, reduce one third premature mortality from non communicable diseases through prevention and treatment and promote mental health and well being. So, by 2030, the target is to reduce uh, the premature death is due to non communicable diseases by one third. And the report says that this target may not be attained due to the increasing burden of non communicable diseases. So, what is NCD? WHO, the World Health Organization, it says that non-communicable disease or chronic diseases are diseases of long duration and generally slow progression. NCDs, it can, uh, it can, it is the result of a combination of genetic or physiological, uh, environmental or behavioral factors. And the four main NCDs, they are cardiovascular diseases like heart attack and stroke, cancer, chronic respiratory diseases such as the chronic obstructed pulmonary disease and asthma and diabetes. NCDs, they are one of the major reasons for the death occurring globally. That is of the total death that is occurring globally, 71 percentage is due to non-communicable diseases. And of the total deaths due to NCDs, around 80 to 85 percentage it occurs in the low and middle income countries. So, you can imagine the burden of NCDs, it will again enhances the poverty uh, dilemma because um, it, uh, the people they will have to spend out of the pocket spending is necessary for the treatment of the NCDs and especially in the low income countries, it will, um, it will uh, reduce the effect of the poverty alleviation programs which are brought by the government. Now, each year, 15 million people die due to NCDs and that is in the range of 30 to 69 years. Now, coming to the risk factors contributing to non-communicable diseases, there are a lot of factors. Some of the very important ones are unhealthy diet, physical inactivity, exposure to tobacco smoke, the harmful use of alcohol, rapid unplanned urbanization, globalization of unhealthy lifestyles and population aging. This unhealthy diets and physical inactivity, it will be shown up as high blood pressure, high glucose level and also obesity. So, these are known as the metabolic risk factors and they promote the cardiovascular diseases. Cardiovascular diseases is one among the NCDs which is, is the, uh, which is contributing to the highest death in the premature, uh, highest premature deaths. So, these are some of the factors that contributes to the cardiovascular diseases. Then tobacco use, alcohol is there. Also rapid unplanned urbanization, urbanization which leads to pollution and air pollution is one of the major factor contributing to the death in every country. And unhealthy lifestyle that is depending on um, this uh, uh, food, uh, the food uh, dependence of high salt and sugar, uh, uh, sugar content foods and all. They also causes NCDs and also populations, the aging factor of the population. So, these are some of the risk factors that contribute to the NCDs. To deal with the non-communicable diseases, this risk factors has to be reduced. Along with that, the detection, screening and treatment of NCDs as well as palliative care for the aged population is necessary or they are the key components of the response to non-communicable diseases. Coming to India, Recently, uh, uh, we know that the non-communicable disease burden for India is uh, it's increasing every year and recently a report was published that is the India State Level Disease Burden Initiative Report. This report, it is a joint initiative of the 
Indian Council of Medical Research, the Public Health Foundation of India and the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation in collaboration with the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Now this report it mainly studies major non-communicable diseases in India and also the deaths due to suicides in different states of our country. <laughs> the highlights of this report it says that the highest rate of increase in ischemia, ischemic heart disease and diabetes is in the less developed states of India. So the burden of NCDs is again found in the less developed states which again aggravates the poverty, uh, poverty problems. Now, apart from this NCD, the report also states that suicide is the leading cause of death in 15 to 39 year age group. Also, 32 percentage of the global burden of respiratory diseases are also in India. Now, the next, the report highlights that the proportional contribution of cancers to the total health loss in India also doubled from 1990 to 2016. So, this report, it collected its data from 1990 to 2016 and it is shown that the proportional contribution of cancer has also doubled in this year. The next one it is said that the prevalence of diabetes in adults aged 20 years or older also increased from 5.5 percentage in 1990 to 7.7 percentage in 2016. And in the recently uh, adopted National Health Policy of India 2017, it is recommended that premature mortality from non-communicable diseases should be reduced by 25 percentage by 2025. So these findings in the report, it is necessary because we are, the government is planning to launch the Ayushman Bharat, which is a health program and these uh, findings it will help in uh, planning or bringing new provisions in the Aishman Bharat scheme. So that is about the non-communicable diseases. Our next uh, topic is Mudra scheme. Mudra or the Micro Units Development and Revenance Agency Limited, it is under the Pradhan Mandri Mudra Yojana and the scheme it is it was brought for providing loans to the non-corporate non-farm small and micro enterprises and they provides around 10 lakh rupees. So this program it aims to use the microfinance to bring in economic development and focus on the people who are at the bottom of the pyramid especially like the small vendors, small manufacturing units etc. And this loan, this, this loan it is known as the mudra loans and it is offered by commercial banks, RRBs, small finance banks cooperative banks, MFIs and NBFCs. So the borrower they can uh, directly approach any of these institutions or they can also apply by online also. Now there are three products under this program that is the Shishu, Kishore and Tarun. Shishu it is covering uh, loans up to rupees 50,000 while Kishore it is above 50,000 up to 5 lakhs and Tarun it is above 5 lakh up to 10 lakhs. So these three products are brought because to signify the stage of growth or development and funding needs of the beneficiary micro unit or entrepreneur or entrepreneur and also provide a reference point for the next phase of graduation or growth. So three products are there and the main purpose of this loan it is Mudra loan is extended for a variety of purposes which provides income generating opportunities and employment creation in manufacturing services, retail and agricultural and, and allied activities. So it's promoting the lower level people and giving finance to them to bring in employment opportunities. Recently, Raghuram Rajan, the ex uh, former uh, RBI governor, he in a 17 page note to the Lok Sabha committee on estimates said that Loans under Pradhan Mandri Mudra Yojana and Kisan Credit Card needed to be examined more closely for potential credit risk. He said that now the NPA problem, uh, which is a big problem in the banking sector, it's mainly due to the corporate sector. But these loans, they can also be in the long term, can become as non-performing assets. So he has asked the government to be more, examine these programs more closely and 
so because it can become a potential credit risk. So this um, report was recently submitted to the committee on estimates and it's been studied by the government. Our next topic is Umang app. This is a mobile application and it is known as the unified mobile app for new age governance, a one-stop solution for all government programs. It is developed by the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology and National E-Governance Division. This is a division under this Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. So both these, they to drive mobile governance in India. This is also an initiative under the Digital India and also it, it also takes the advantage of mobile penetration, smartphone penetration in India. Now, it's a common platform for various government services such as the gas booking, Aadhaar, crop insurance, EPF and national pension system. And it also helps in integration with Aadhaar, pay government, digital locker, etc. Now, this National, recently this National E-Governance Division, it is aimed at bringing a new um, service to this app that is a artificial intelligence voice assistant. So this app, it is available in different languages uh, that is people from different regions can assess it in their own regional languages. And to enable or to make it more uh, user friendly, the division, this division they are planning to bring a artificial intelligence voice assistant which will be available in regional languages and this artificial intelligence to widen the coverage for government services. This is mainly uh, dealing with the regional language speakers and the illiterate people so that it will be more user friendly for them and the uh, use of this app it will be taken from the urban centers to the rural areas. So that is about Umang app. Coming to our last topic it is India Cooling Action Plan. This plan on the World Ozone Day which was on 16th September, the Environment Minister, he released a draft India Cooling Action Plan and this was drafted by the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change and this action plan, India was the first country in the world to develop a document on cooling action plan. Now, this action plan, it mainly deals with the, uh, it, uh, deals with the cooling requirements of different sectors and what are the actions to be taken to reduce the cooling requirement as well as to provide a sustainable cooling method for the people. Now, it provides sustainable cooling and thermal comfort for all while securing environmental and socio-economic benefits for the society. Now, it is under the aegis of Montreal Protocol to phase out ozone depleting substances. It's, it mainly focuses on the Kigali Agreement. You know, Kigali Agreement, it was an amendment brought to the Montreal Protocol in 2016 and it deals with phasing out uh, hydrofluorocarbons. HFCs, it is a uh, family of greenhouse gases which is used in refrigerants and air conditioning and it affects the ozone layer. So, this Kigali agreement, it was brought to as an amendment to Montreal Protocol to deal with HFCs. Now, the objectives of this action plan, it is to assessment of cooling requirements across sectors in the next 20 years. That is a long term plan assessing the cooling requirements of different sectors and then map the technologies available to cater the cooling requirements, what all technologies are available, whether they are sustainable or not. And then suggest interventions in each sector to provide for sustainable cooling and thermal comfort for all. That is the present ones depends on HFCs, and how, which is an unsustainable method, how to bring in sustainable methods. Then focus on skilling RAC service technicians, that is the refrigeration and air conditioning service technician. And then develop an research and development innovation ecosystem for indigenous development of alternative technologies. Instead of the uh, technologies which uses HFCs, we, have, we are planning to uh, uh, do research and development so that we can develop an indigenous alternative technologies for the cooling methods. Coming to the goals, it is recognition of cooling and related areas. And said in the objectives, they are planning to bring this cooling and related areas as a part of the research under national science and technology program to support the development of technological solutions and encourage innovation challenges. The next goal is 
reduction of cooling demand across sectors by 20 percentage to 25 percentage by year 2037-38. And under this Kigali agreement, India has to freeze the use of HFCs by 2028. So, it is a long term plan and they are planning to reduce the cooling demand by 20 to 25 percentage by 2037-38. Next is reduction of refrigerant demand by 25 percentage to 30 percentage by 2037-38. Then reduction of cooling energy requirements by 25 percentage to 40 percentage by year 2037-38. And finally, training and certification of 1 lakh service sector technicians by the year 2020-23. And this is in synergy with the Skill India mission. Now, we will see a little about the Montreal Protocol. This Montreal Protocol, it is also known as Montreal Protocol on substances that deplete the ozone layer. And it is a multilateral environmental agreement, one of the most successful environmental treaty, that international environmental treaty. And it regulates the production and consumption of ozone depleting substances, which are man-made chemicals that deplete the ozone layer, which protects the earth from UV radiation. And this was adopted on 15th September 1987 and the protocol is one of the most successful because it has been ratified by almost all the UN members that is by all 197 UN member states. Under this Montreal protocol there is a multilateral fund for the implementation of Montreal protocol. It was established in 1991 under the article 10 of this Treaty. And the main objective of this fund is to provide financial and technical assistance to developing countries and mainly it focuses on those countries whose annual per capita consumption and production of ozone depleting substance is less than 0.3 kg and to comply with the control measures of the protocol. So, it provides financial and technical assistance to these developing countries. And the fund's activities, its activities is implemented by four international agencies that is the UN Environment or the UNEP, then the United Nations Development Program, the UN Industrial Development Organization and the World Bank. So that's all about Montreal Protocol. That's all for this session. Thank you for your time.